What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Final Hydra, and today I wanted to talk to you about the new update coming to V-Rising. Secrets of Gloomrot. I was fortunate to be invited into the closed update test for a chance to check out several of the new changes coming to the game along with the new content. A big thank you to Stunlock for having me for the test. It really means a lot. I will be avoiding spoilers as much as possible in this video, so if you'd like to experience all the new content without spoilers, you'll be fairly safe watching this video. Diving right in, I'd like to talk about some of the changes I witnessed and how I feel about them. I was able to get about 16 hours of playtime, but even with that, I didn't get a chance to see everything. With that time, I was able to reach level 60, meaning I didn't get to see the level 80 endgame content. However, I was able to see most of the early and mid-game content. I will avoid revealing any details about the new bosses or major area changes in this video. I will be posting a separate video later with that footage and my thoughts on them, if you're interested. So with that out of the way, let's get started. I can't begin to talk about the update without addressing my personal favorite part of V-Rising, the bosses. Now, while I'm not going to show you any new footage of them, I will say the new bosses I saw were fun, they were engaging, and they were mechanically varied from each other. The team at Stunlock also went back and reworked some of the old bosses to better fit the new progression system, including what you unlock from defeating them. This really showed me their passion and dedication for the game. I know there are other studios that would have just ignored the older content to focus on new stuff to add, so I really appreciated this. Speaking of being bosses, let's talk about the new and improved V-Blood system. It has been totally overhauled and no longer requires you to build a station at your base just to access it. It now has a dedicated menu, which allows you to change which boss target you're tracking on the fly. The bosses will appear on the list once your level is high enough for them. Once you beat them, you are rewarded with a full breakdown of their loot, as well as cool new art for each of them. The previous system, where you had to go back to your base to look for a new target, broke up the flow of the gameplay, and this update fixes that problem elegantly and makes it easier. The new system is easy to navigate, looks clean, and now breaks up the bosses into acts. Trying to finish an act to further your boss hunting really gave me a sense of progression, as opposed to feeling like I was just going after one boss after another after another. On to new weapons and spells. The stuff everybody's going to want to know about. They added two new weapons to the game the dual pistols, and the great swords. I think both are welcome additions. They feel fresh, new, and responsive while carving out their own playstyle unique from the other weapons already in the game. They definitely didn't feel like reskins to me. The dual pistols are an addition that I personally love. They are super snappy and fun, and I really enjoyed the bullet barrage ability. They're fun, engaging, and they were just really cool to fight with. Plus, they look really cool. The great sword is also fun. It swings a lot slower than its small sword counterpart, but the hits feel more powerful and the big AOE on the attacks is great for groups of enemies. I found the slow swing speed to be a little punishing, especially if you have to land a hit after a dash for the extra damage effect. However, that may have just been my own experience with it. Stunlock Studios has also reworked the magic in the game. All the spells from each magic type now have a specific status effect for that type. For example, blood magic causes leech, illusion magic causes weakness, storm magic causes static. These help really differentiate the magic types better than small aesthetic changes that used to be how they were told apart. There is now also a new magic type, storm. Storm magic, as I'm sure you've guessed, is all weather or electricity based. I didn't get a chance to see all of the new storm magic spells, but the ones I did find were fun to use and felt unique amongst the existing spells in the magic roster, so that was cool. They've also added a socket system for all the spells. As you adventure and defeat bosses and explore the lands, you will find different gems of varying quality of low, medium, and high. As you slot these into the appropriate spell, they will add bonuses or change effects of the spell. Like I found some that increase the damage, uh, the range that the ability would go, how long an AOE would last, stuff like that. And these were really nice to like help tailor your spells to like your playstyle. So I really enjoyed that as well. There are new legendary weapons in the game. Bosses can now drop shattered weapons that you will need to unlock a special forge in your castle in order to reforge them to their legendary glory. 
They seem fairly strong and come with ability modifications, meaning they will augment one of your weapon's natural abilities to apply a magic status effect, like leech or static on hit. I found a crossbow that applied leech and a sword that applied weaken. Both were great and felt like the clear choice over anything else I had at the time. I really can't emphasize enough how powerful these weapons are once you fix them up to their old glory, so you're going to have to get out there and find some for yourself. And lastly, there is a new spell which allows you to dominate mount. This allows you to bind a horse as a familiar and adjust its appearance to suit your vampiric style. I personally thought the new cosmetic changes looked really badass. In addition to the makeover, the new horse can now be summoned to you if you're not in combat, and it gains a double jump that helps traversing through the world. All around, these are all welcome changes. All right, so castles. We're now able to build them up bigger and better than ever before. It's wild how the simple addition of stairs can completely change how you approach designing your dominion. Unlike how previous castles were so spread out in order to have room for everything, now you could just build up to gain more floor space for crafting tables and decorations. I felt this really did add a layer of depth to the castle building that was sorely missed before. I really enjoyed trying to figure out how the new stairs were going to change the look of my castle and found myself building in obscure ways just to see how the new roof would look in different configurations. Overall, this was a needed and much welcome addition to the building system. So the last thing I want to touch on is the reworked world map. There are too many changes to existing areas for me to list them all, and I'm sure you will want to discover them for yourself. So let's instead talk about the new area, Gloomrot. Gloomrot felt awesome and it fits right into the world the team at Stunlock are trying to meticulously craft for us. It is broken up into several different areas. Each of them look fantastic and were great to explore and experience for the first time. Notably, Gloomrot has multiple factions that are constantly at war with each other, making it hard to explore anywhere without stumbling into a skirmish between the opposing forces. I felt this really gave the area a sense of action and excitement, making me feel as though I were walking through an active and changing landscape. And even with all my time in the test, I didn't get to see it all. So who knows what secrets there are still to discover in Gloomrot. So that's my brief overview of the new Gloomrot update to V-Rising. I think almost every part of it is a welcome addition or change. Despite throwing myself hard into the playtest for almost the entire weekend, I still couldn't see it all. So I'm excited for the update to go live so I can jump in with the rest of you and experience everything this update has to offer. But what do you think of these updates? Is this enough to spark your interest in diving back into V-Rising or maybe trying it for the first time? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, folks, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. And if you're looking to see some live gameplay, I'll be streaming this game live on my Twitch channel after it goes live on the 17th. The link is in the description down below. All right, folks, thanks for watching. As always, this has been Final Hydra, and I will see you next time.